Hey guys, Dreadbane joined by Sapphire. This match is between Kalua, the blue Terran player, versus FPX, the orange Zerg. Now, this is Lost Temple, so hopefully it's a good one. Yeah, really interested in uh, this game because Kalua is one of the best Terran players in Australia, and he did so well in the Trans Tasman, but he had to pull out because he wasn't able to play the rest of them. So who knows how well he would have gone in uh, the Trans Tasman if Kalua was able to play his way through. Maybe we would be talking about Kalua and not Filthy as the champion, who knows. But uh, <laughs> that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. He did play very, very well in those games he was able to play in, so who knows how far he would have gone. But uh, yeah, he's a really strong Terran, and I'm curious as to whether he's going to open with Supplier of Barracks. He is opening with that Supply Depot there, so he isn't going for that super fast at Barracks, being concerned about some kind of early cheese. And FBX in these positions, I feel these positions, cross positional like this, really favors the Zerg. You can expand up really nicely and even think about taking this gold expansion and split the map off, which you're quite happy to do. Stay a base or two in front of Terran and really not be too worried by metal map control and not be forced into attacking positional metal builds and make them come at you. So I, I really think that this is a, a great place for FBX to be in, who looks at this point with no spawning pool. We may be seeing a very, very late pool, or possibly even a straight into hatch opening at this point. So he's already at uh, 14 supply and no spawning pool. So I'm not quite sure what his plan is. There it is there. So we are seeing a 14 pool. Wasn't going to go straight for that hatch opening, which is super aggressive versus Terran, but if you hold it, it can be so, so effective. So... Yeah, I'm looking forward to this match, and it should be a good one. Yeah, um, uh, as you were saying, the this positioning is great for Zerg player, but then you've got these islands there that, you know, the Terrans can lift off if they do choose. It is really risky, of course, but it can. this map can be quite good for both players. Meanwhile, this drone is going to work on this SCV of ba uh, the barracks, but it was so late that he was able to get it finished. So a bit late there by FPX, while this Marine will be out in a couple seconds to take care of this scouting drone who hasn't actually scouted all of his base he's just happy to hang out by the barracks so you know there's not much else to see to be fair so well it looks yeah. like this uh, scv could be sniped here but no the drone actually going down so this scv taking the hits for the team just to uh, <laughs> ensure that the marine gets to pop out and snipe that drone in the face but we are seeing both players scout fairly effectively tonight now just to see exactly what's going on kulu is sending in his scv and just to check things out while well, we are seeing a fast uh, expansion coming in after spawning pool, so he wasn't getting gas up online, no gas at this point. He wanted that uh, spawning pool queen out really, really fast. I don't like that too much. I feel that it delays your gas uh, by a fair bit, and that means you can't get speedlings online quick enough. Especially if we were to see a reaper come out, or it looks like we may be seeing fast hellions perhaps, or even fast vikings. He's just not going to have the gas online early enough to be able to deal with it unless he gets a second queen. He is getting the second queen, which will help him with uh, a hellion harass and even uh, protect his overlords if he has to cluster up if he goes for the viking harass. It feels like Terran has two options as to which harass he's going to go with, and he is going for the vikings. No reactor, which is a bit interesting. Now he is getting the starport on now, so maybe he's saving the reactor for the starport and doesn't want to risk lifting up his wall in at this point. So interesting opening here by Kalua. I'm not sure how effective he's going to be with this uh, Hellions once he gets it online, because there is that second queen, and uh, looking to uh, spread more and more of the creep here, I presumably, and we are seeing that uh, tumor go down. So I like FBX's thoughts here. I would have liked to see that get, get that gas a little bit earlier, but that second queen is going to help out so much, and it means his expansion has a queen straight away, as well as expansion bringing on another queen. So he's going to have three queens to defend against this Hellion Harass. So I like this really nicely. And we are seeing this first Hellion go out now. The Speedling is, uh, sorry, non-Speedling is going to pick it up and be roasted. So he's going to see this Hellion Harass coming. It's just a question of how effective it's going to be. He did let it go face to face with that Zergling though. So he did lose a bit of health or he could have microed that a bit better. But we'll have to see how much damage it does while it does go into this base. This queen does get out right on time. So there's three queens hanging out by this entrance, so that'll put a quick end to that little plan there by um, by Kalua. So, um, good timing there by FPX to get that queen out, just to make sure nothing happened. Yeah, and we are seeing that uh, Starport coming line and giving up the tech lab to the factory, so he's switching into Siege Tanks here, and no expansion on his Starport, so he's not going to be able to double pump anything unless he throws a reactor down, so I'm not quite sure what he's going to be building at this point. He is starving for gas though, getting a second refinery on very, very late. So that means that uh, when he does go to these siege tanks and <laughs> to defend the, the Terran players out there who do hear whining about siege tanks all the time, they cost so much gas to produce. They're very, very expensive investment. So in a build like this where he's got his 
second refining up very, very slowly, it does mean that he's going to be delayed. And we are seeing Tiki Little Zergling getting away without getting roasted there. This Zergling, surprising that it's able to live, finally being uh, <laughs> torched there by the Hellion, who was looking to restore his pride, that he was going to let a Zergling get away and get a free from some free scouting information. So at this point, this is a typical scenario that Zerg likes to complain about. <laughs> Terran sitting around with one, 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 one barracks, one factory, one starport, turtling up, getting two more barracks on, two more uh, barracks online now, and expanding. But he's originally with that one, one opening, really hard to break. The wall is really, really strong, and they're free to just choose whichever harassment that they can on the Zerg. So this is a, a cause for much uh, whining, but yeah, a very common opening that we are seeing quite a lot of now. What FPX does have his expansion up, of course. Meanwhile, Kalua has his. Uh, maybe maybe FPX might need to think about expanding again to stay ahead of this I mean, while Kalua just hangs out in his base um, deciding what he's going to do. So uh, FPX does have an interesting choice at the moment to what he's actually got because he's got a couple of roaches and a handful of zerglings but not much of a force to go push out with just yet. So he's got a decision to come up with for the moment. Yeah, very effective scouting at this point from... Uh... FBX, who is, he's got these really nice positioned overlords, just sending more units out trying to get to Poly Cell Naga, just, and just really keeping a, a good map awareness at this point, just not letting Kalua get a, any kind of sneaky expansions to get ahead. Whereas Kalua has moved forward with his barracks, which does mean that uh, you'll have forward vision and also like a little sort of funnel his units onto this killing zone on the right hand side which will take shots from these siege tanks as they come in and then further shots from the marines when they can't come to the right so really nice positioning there from uh, Kalua who is overcompensating here he's got now he's got two geysers going at his expansion he got those online before he had any mules or drones uh, <laughs> working going to work there so and we are seeing uh, this another expansion being taken here by FPX so he's looking to three base not interested in taking the gold expansion which is a little bit interesting, and we've obviously had a lag spike here because we can see that the mis macro mistake is both players trying to macro fiercely, but it looks very passive from both players, which you kind of expect from these cross positions in Lost Temple. FPX getting that Spire online, and I like the positioning here with the hope that if there's an expansion scan or a main scan, it's going to be missed. 